Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, let's talk about what Cloudflare has done. It has released a new workers runtime, which is a, another way of saying it's a new JavaScript runtime, which works pretty much to how Cloudflare workers work. Now, just to give you a quick context on what Cloudflare workers do, it's a technology which allows you to run JavaScript code in a server, first of all. So it's a server side thing. It's not like something which runs in your browser or anything. But when you're running a workers code in a server, it uses JavaScript just like how your browser operates, right? So your browser can open 10 different tabs, right? And all of those 10 tabs are isolated from each other. Similarly, when you are, let's say, running JavaScript on the edge on Cloudflare workers, Cloudflare uses them almost in the form of tabs, right? So every single script execution happens in a single tab. And that script runs very fast because your browser, for example, is always ready to run JavaScript, right? It does not suffer from problems of cold boot or anything. So this open source workers runtime is basically built on top of that technology. It's obviously not feature complete with how Cloudflare works because Cloudflare uses its own internal stack, but it's a pretty close implementation and it's a pretty uh, open source with a generous license as well. So it's useful for people who want to, let's say, host their own workers runtime or just develop it locally. So you can see some of the use cases for this is self-hosting workers, which is of course like one of the options once the technology is open source, you can self-host it. Local development and testing is great but it's not that interesting because local testing and development is already possible with miniflare on cloudflare but what i'm personally interested more in programmable proxies use case because this is a use case which actually we also use in code damn playgrounds for example where we use a javascript proxy to properly map the connections to the back end so this is something which i'm actually interested in seeing if we can ourselves not just interested in this tech itself but interested in using it in production so let's let me just you know we'll see how this goes through we'll also take a look internally if this makes sense to implement or not but this is a use case which i am really fascinated about as well because cloudflare as a company obviously is a very solid company in terms of tech stack and the code they write so i'm pretty interested in knowing how this performs as a programmable proxy now just like cloudflare workers worker d which their name is for the for this runtime it's not they just say it's not just another way to run javascript or or and wasm for example it, they are clearly saying it's not like node or dino or bun it's it's specifically uniquely designed to solve a number of problems you see they are saying that we are specifically focused on http servers they are not focused on building cli apps they are not built focused on building local gui apps servers or anything in between they're not trying to build or they're not allowing you or you know they, it's not built for these use cases they are saying that we are optimizing and we are building this runtime heavily and specifically for running http servers cloudflare also bets big on web standards it has to because it's not running in a node environment so it just bets a lot on the apis which are provided by web for example example fetch url crypto and other apis and there is another interesting concept called nano services which this includes now what this is if you know about microservices you know microservices can be thought of as independent deployments of a bunch of code which does independent things mostly right so for example one of the lambdas can be called as a microservice which authenticates the user another lambda which retrieves some data from some database can be another lambda right but the problem is that when microservices themselves have to talk they have to talk over some sort of network right it's not a process call it's not a in memory or you know a very fast call it happens over a network that means microservices talking to themselves on a huge scale can become relatively slower worker d solves this with the concept of nano server where they are saying that you deploy the functions, different sort of functions, just like you deploy microservices. But nano services is a new model, which just comes with the advantage that these calls between different functions will happen almost as if they are running in the same code base. You see, they mentioned that one worker explicitly sends a request to another worker, worker here being a nano service. The destination worker actually runs in the same thread with zero latency. It performs more like a function call. Obviously, I'm not sure how they implement this, but this sounds very cool because it, what essentially they are saying is that you can split your things into different microservices essentially deploy them and then whenever other services call each other as long as everything is hosted on a worker they would work perfectly as if you are calling just another function 
And of course, they have done some bits of magic down there to make that possible because obviously it's not a function call directly, but they are just saying that there is minimal to no overhead for that. Another thing which they are including in this runtime itself is homogeneous deployment, which makes sense if it is going forward with this nano services model. This is because this homogeneous deployment actually says that, hey, if you are using Worker D and if you are deploying it on multiple servers, let's say almost an edge network, then every machine has to run every single service, right? It makes sense because if you are enabling nano services as a function call, they cannot communicate over network. Network by default would introduce so much latency that any sort of optimizations you do on a software level would be removed. The only solution for this is that if every single server is running every single service, or at least is capable of running every single service. And Cloudflare, I mean, I would have been skeptical of reading this initially, but Cloudflare says that it runs its own tech stack on every single Cloudflare Edge server, right? So every single service or every single worker which you have ever written is deployed on all the servers which can run workers. So that is why they say this is why cloud services on Cloudflare, including the ones that we use workers, are able to go from zero to million or millions of traffic per second without any trouble. Then there are some more advantages, some more security built in place. They say that it's always backwards compatible. This is one of the things which Cloudflare aims to maintain. Their own products are also mostly backwards compatible. But yeah, one of the things which WorkerD is not, it's not an off-the-shelf edge compute platform. That means you can't just take WorkerD, deploy it on some magical platform and expect it to work as performant as Cloudflare is working. Obviously, it is very hard for you as an individual to beat the performance which Cloudflare offers because they are running WorkerD inside of a very heavily optimized Cloudflare stack, right, which consists of hardware to software. This is just a very small part of what even Cloudflare workers has to offer outside of servers, outside of extra software and technologies surrounding this. This is a very small part, which is independent, which is functional, yes, but it's still, I won't say like it's something which you can just download and make it production ready in one day. It's not gonna happen. It's for mostly for advanced users or it's mostly for something which I mentioned, for example, for basic users like proxying, programmable proxies using JavaScript. So that is also interesting. But nonetheless, I still feel like if you're trying to deploy workers or if you're trying to deploy that particular thing, it's better to go with Cloudflare workers platform itself. WorkerD is for advanced use cases. It's not for simple basic use cases where you can get to production traffic very easily. But yeah, it's good to see something that's this significant coming out from Cloudflare because it's always interesting to see how big corporations like Cloudflare work on open source and remove the barriers to, you know, other people deploying it. Maybe WorkerD gets picked up by Vercel. Who knows? Vercel can run it on their own AWS tech stack and make the pricing even cheaper. I I don't know. I really hope that Vercel does that. But, you know, you get the idea. Like, this can be picked by other big companies and built on top of that. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully, you learned something new. If you did, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. That is all for this one. Let me know your reviews on Cloudflare Workers and this Worker D runtime. I'm gonna see you in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching.